Peace, peace, peace. Rami Salam El, thank you for joining us. Um, question and answer series designed to clear up any confusion about Moors, Moors Americans, Moors Science Temple of America, uh, Noble Jew Ali, the Moors Divine and National Movement, uh, anything and everything to do with Moors. And uh, again, I don't know it all. I don't claim to know it all. Um, this is just designed to provide you with some information, some sources, some references for you to look uh, further and research further um, and verify whether this information is correct or not correct. Um, because man knows not by being told. Uh, and with that, let's get to the question. And it is coming from Prince Marcel. Uh, the question is, why is the prophet's life so mysterious? And this is Prophet Noble Jai Lee, by the way. Um, why is the prophet's life so mysterious? And can you elaborate on the connection between him, Marcus Garvey, Fard Muhammad, and Elijah Muhammad? Thank you, Prince Marcel. It's a great question. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, let's start with why is his life so mysterious? Um, I don't know. <laughs> from my perspective you know I can only speak on this is you know my opinion or how I view things um, it seems as though there are certain people that want to keep Noble Drew Ali's life secret or hidden for long enough so that it he becomes this mythical figure that you know you're not even sure if he existed or not um, and that is an easy way to dismiss um, you know, who he is, who he was, um, what he did, um, and the information he brought forth, because you can say, oh, it's just some religious stuff, uh, you know, similar to Jesus. <laughs> um, uh, now for the, as for the connection or the elaboration on the connection between him, Marcus Garvey, Fard Muhammad, and Elijah Muhammad, um, I'll start first with uh, Marcus Garvey. And let me read from, this is the Holy Quran, or the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, or the Moorish Science Temple of America. Um, this was prepared, uh, divinely prepared, by Noble Jali. Uh, and in the very last chapter, called The End of Time and the Fulfilling of the Prophecies, um, it speaks to the relationship. So I'm just read, I'm going to just read a little bit of it. The last prophet in these days is Noble Drew Ali, who was prepared divinely in time by Allah. Allah is just the Arabic name for God, you know, the Most High, the Creator, Yahweh, um, Jehovah, uh, the All, whatever name we would like to give uh, our Creator. Just, just so you're not, um, you know, confused on that. Uh, who was prepared? Who was prepared divinely in time by Allah to redeem men? from their sinful ways and to warn them of the great wrath which is sure to come upon the earth. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus in those days to warn and stir up the nation and prepare them to receive the divine creed which was to be taught by Jesus. In these modern days there came a forerunner that was divinely prepared by the great God Allah and his name is Marcus Garvey who did teach and warn the nations of the earth to prepare to meet the coming prophet, who was to bring the true and divine creed of Islam. And his name is Noble Drew Ali, who was prepared and sent to the earth by Allah to teach the old time religion and the everlasting gospel to the sons of men, that every nation shall and must worship under their own vine and fig tree and return to their own and be one with their father God, Allah. So, there's, this is one connection that's coming from, you know, the information that Noble Drew brought himself. Um, I understand that in these days and times, a lot of people, especially our people, are, um, they may not uh, respond or connect well with things that come across as religious um, or religion. Um, and that's a whole nother topic, but I understand that. So um, beyond this book. Uh, you know, we can step away from this book, and I want to present um, another piece of evidence, which is a postcard that Noble Drew Ali sent his wife when he visited Marcus Garvey uh, while Marcus Garvey was in prison in uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, I believe. Um, 
I gotta I should have double checked that before I even started this but um, you'll see the image afterwards and, and you can uh, you'll see for yourself um, but the postcard was of him visiting Marcus Garvey while he was uh, in prison and I found it very interesting that a month later I believe I want to say he visited him in October and then a month later Marcus Garvey had been released from prison and deported from the United States. Um, makes it seem as though maybe, you know, some words were exchanged, some information was exchanged between Noble Drew Ali and Marcus Garvey um, that maybe had the United States a little uh, fearful of the, the two movements uniting and becoming an uh, unstoppable force, if you will. Uh, I don't know. But you should look it up and see for yourself. Don't believe me. Um, and now, and now with the connection with Farrar Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad, um, first let's be clear that Noble Dr. Ali opened the first temple in 1913 in Newark, New Jersey. It was under the, the name the Canaanite Temple. Um, the Nation of Islam under Farrar Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad it didn't start until 1930. Um, furthermore, uh, it is evidence that both Farad Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad were students of Noble Dr. Ali and attended the temple um, and received the teachings and the lessons from Noble Dr. Ali. Um, now, uh, why um, Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam, Farad Muhammad, why their teachings seem to differ from Noble Dr. Ali's teachings. Uh, that again is a, another deep topic uh, that, that honestly requires uh, its own whole separate uh, video, you know, and, and a really lengthy uh, build on that. Um, but I can show you some evidence besides just the fact that Noble Dr. Ali started his temple in 1913 and you know the NOI started in 1930 um, I can show you some some undeniable proof that uh, Elijah Muhammad and Farad Muhammad were students of Noble Dr. Ali and with that I present to you uh, Elijah Muhammad's brother John Muhammad I'm going to put on another hat <laughs> And then we'll talk a little bit about it. I don't want you to see my bald head. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, you can laugh. I said it, but don't you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I got a little bit of hair. I ain't completely bald. <laughs> Not like some people. I got a little bit. How many seen these before? Good. Now this. Let's continue. That was the first time that I seen him with the hat on, like this. Now there was people before he came that belonged to the Moorish Americans by Noble Dr. Ali. They didn't have this on it, the moon and the star. It was blank. It was blank. But the hat was red, they were black ones and red ones. And um, 
The moon, I believe, or one of them, they didn't have it, but they would stamp the literatures that they had to send out to people to come to their meeting. The moon was not on this side, it was on this side. So we asked Master Farad concerning Mr. Noble Drew Ali, who was a good man. Yes, sir. I call all of them good that try to tell our people something for self. That's right. All of them good. So this hat here is the one that we wore at the first beginning of Muslims in the city of Detroit uh, when uh, Master Farad Muhammad was here and his representative at that time in one of the times the first one that I seen was named Abdul Muhammad he wore one of these two the messenger of Allah, he wore one, and you might have seen this picture sitting out there with it on. He had a one just like this. Only the torso was longer. Now I'm going to give you some hints. Some you might see don't have a torso on it, right? What is the meaning of the torso? What is the meaning of it? hanging down. Well, I tell you, it means the same thing that it means when you are graduating from school. That means knowledge. You see, it means knowledge. Same as school, when you graduate from school, I don't know if the devil ever told a lot of our people, so many black people now is graduating, they don't tell them everything, you know, they just let them get on out of here, yeah, you all right, yeah, you hear your diploma, and then when you come out, say, what nationality are you? Oh, I'm a nigger, I'm a Negro, I'm Afro-American, you still dumb as hell. Excuse the expression, but that's true, you know. Because, but you got the tarsal on. And don't know your name. What's your name? Now in closing, <laughs> in closing, who aside from Noble Drew Ali is speaking about so-called black people knowing their nationality? Don't worry, I'll wait. Peace and love.